Okay, finally here is our tangent function. We're asked to do the same thing. We're asked to find <clears throat> the amplitude and the period um, and then graph it from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Well, the thing is, I'm not sure why they asked you for amplitude <laughs> because tangent functions, if you'll recall, this is what a typical tangent function looks like. If here's my axes, um, it has asymptotes. Okay, and those asymptotes occur at pi over 2. Okay, there's our pi over 2, our pi. 3 pi over 2 would be another asymptote. They occur anywhere the cosine is 0. Okay, and that's because remember tangent is sine over cosine. So anytime you get to where the cosine is 0, it's going to be undefined because you'll have a 0 in the denominator of your fraction. So tangent looks like this it has asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and every pi um, over 2 after that. So also at negative pi over 2, um, there's our negative pi, uh, negative 3 pi over 2, there would be another negative 2 pi. Okay, um, so it has asymptotes, and then it just follows those asymptotes. It's up on the right, it crosses down at 0, and we come down here. Okay, and it repeats that pattern over and over. Now notice... Um, the amplitude is undefined, okay, for, for sine, or excuse me, for sine and cosine, you do have an amplitude, but that's because it describes your waves. Um, tangent doesn't have those, so amplitude is undefined, no matter what you're multiplying by in front of that tangent. It will affect your graph multiplying there, um, but it doesn't have an amplitude. <laughs> okay, so um, for both of these, our amplitude is going to be undefined. For the period, um, the period of a tangent function, again, remember that's how long it takes to repeat itself. And notice we have an asymptote every, the asymptotes are just pi distance apart. And that pattern is repeating itself every pi. So the period for a tangent function is pi. And again, to change that, we would have to multiply something here on the x, and that's not happening. So our period is pi for both of these. Okay, so remember, sine and cosine's period is 2 pi to repeat, tangent and cotangent, their period is only a length of pi before they repeat again. Okay, let's take a look at what our graph, what would happen with our graph. So we're asked to graph y equals negative 2 tangent x. And like I said, this isn't going to determine our amplitude necessarily, but it will deter determine what our graph looks like. So let me put my points on here. So I have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And the same repeated in this direction, negative pi over 2, just the negatives of them. Okay, um, like I said, it hasn't been shifted right or left, so our asymptotes are still going to happen anywhere the cosine would have been 0. So that's at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Whoops, I missed a little bit, sorry about that. And negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to start by making my curve in the center here. Okay, so let's use some points. Tangent of 0 is 0 times negative 2 is still 0. So at 0, I'm at 0. If you want to make a table, you can. Okay, so when, tan when x is 0, I get 0. Um, what might be helpful to show what happens when you multiply this number here is to use pi over 4, because the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So that's one that's easier to manipulate. So I can put a 1 and a negative 1 okay, on my y-axis and go from there. So if I have pi over 4, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. If I multiply that by negative 2, I get negative 2. So when I'm at pi over 4, which is halfway between 0 and pi over 2, it's like a half and a fourth. Okay? So right here, I'm down at negative 2. Okay, whoa, whoa, wait, my curve was supposed to go up. Well, we multiplied by a negative, so that reflects our curve over the y-axis, or excuse me, the x-axis. So we're down here, our curves are going to be like this, up on the left, down on the right. Um, let's try negative pi over 4 to see what the other side of the curve looks like. The tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. 
Okay, but if you multiply that by negative 2, we get positive 2. So at pi over 4, which we write here, I'm up at positive 2. Like I said, our curve is going to look like this. It's just a little skinnier than our original because it's been stretched a tiny bit, but it still goes forever in each direction. And then just repeat that pattern on each of your sections where you have those asymptotes. So on this last section, I'm just going to have this half since my graph got cut off there at 2 pi. It really does go on forever in that direction, but we're only asked to graph from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And on this one, I would just have this part where my graph ends there. Okay. So there we have it. All right, let's take a look at our next one. 4 tangent x is what we're asked to graph. Again, if you want to be a little more precise, you can use just the shape of the tangent graph and say, well, if I multiply by 4, that's going to stretch it a little bit. But if you want to be more precise in your graph, you can plot points. Um, we do need to prepare our axes. Move down a little bit so I can see it. Okay, so again, I have my pi over 2. <clears throat> There's nothing that's happened to move my graph to the right or to the left. Again, that would have to be changes with my x, and there's nothing happening with the x part. It's all out in front of the tangent. Um, nothing has moved to move it up or down either. Nothing has happened there. That would have to be something added or subtracted from the end of my function, and that's not happening either. All we've done is stretch it a little bit. Okay, so this is a pretty basic change to a tangent function. Okay, our asymptotes are still at the pi over 2's. So pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and negative 3 pi over 2 are my asymptotes. Again, you can plug points in if you want. So when x is 0, the tangent of 0 is 0 times 4 is still 0. <laughs> okay, so we have the point 0, 0. And then if you put in the pi over 4s, so that can be helpful. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 times 4 is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. When I'm at pi over 4, I'm up here at 4. The tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4. So just stretched it by a factor of 4. So notice this is like our normal tangent function. It's up to the right and down to the left. It's just much skinnier. <laughs> so same with these. Okay. Just repeat your curves on each of these. You can plot points on each section if you want. Okay. This one we'd get to our zero before our graph gets cut off there. Because again, they only wanted from negative pi over excuse me, negative two pi to positive two pi. Um, so you're just, whoops, that one's not quite accurate. Just repeating your pattern. And on this one, we're just going to get, here would be the top would be here. We're just going to get the bottom part. Okay, so there we have tangent from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Several examples.